Hello Cup Coders and welcome to another episode of Ars Magica Tutorials. Now this is the second to last tutorial and as such I want to go ahead and let you know that yes you see there's a lot of stuff in here today. We're only going to cover about half of this stuff because everything that's along that wall is actually intended for the last episode. Um, so in this episode we are going to cover the last of the items of Ars Magica but before we get to that I have some well, some things to go over real quick. Um, CTF677 brought up some good, very good points. He's, he's very true, very correct about it. Uh, one of these I didn't even think about was the Seven League Stribe. Now, according to him, and he is right, you can cast it at the ground to go to a cave most times. Now, I'm going to prove that he is absolutely correct on this because I know that there is, you know, a cave down below here. Um, let's go, yeah, let's go way over here. I'm going to bring it over here. Fairly certain, cast it at the ground right here, and it'll take you down. And as you see, we are in a cave. Um, this is actually a cave just under the ground, uh, under the surface, as you can see. So here's what we're going to do: we're going to go ahead and cast it down one more time. Now we are in another cave, as you see. I've already been down here once. Uh, this is another cave further down, and we are at the y coordinates of 29 right now. So if I cast down one more time, well, there's obviously no more caves below, but if I go back up, 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 now we are back on the surface. So yes, you can use Seven Leagues Stride to travel down, up and down between caves and the surface. Um, I understand that the distance that you can travel is based upon how strong the spell is. As you just saw when I tried to, tried to teleport up. It wouldn't let me do it the first time because I was on diminished mode, so I had to go up to normal mode in order to actually make it up because of the distance. So that that's a very good thing to take in mind. I want to warn you in advance, though. Now, I'm in creative, so I can do this and it won't hurt me, but that could kill you. And if you're out, if you're underground and you use Seven Leagues Stride to come back up to the surface, you're running the risk that it'll actually teleport you up above the ground and cause you fall damage. So be very careful with that. Uh, my suggestion is if you don't want to if you want to avoid the fall damage just dig up but you can definitely use it to dig down also be warned it from my understanding is not a guarantee to put you on a solid block you may find yourself teleporting down above lava obviously not something you want to do so be very careful with that spell but it does have its uses all right next the accelerate spell in the last episode, I tried to show what the spell did, but I didn't know what it did. And at that time, I was unable to pull up the wiki, so I couldn't look it up and tell you. Well, CTF677 has corrected me on this spell. He, he, as you can see, he did tell me what it was for. Now, it will speed up furnace operations, and it will also speed up plant growth. So if you've got a whole bunch of gold and you throw it into your furnace you want to smelt it real quick well throw your gold in there with your coal and stand beside it and cast accelerate that'll make it smelt a little bit faster all right the next thing i want to get into and before we get into this i want to tell you well we're going to get into spell staffs now i personally on my one player games have had a problem getting these things to work as in i'll craft a spell i'll throw a spell on it I'll craft, craft a stave, put a spell on it, and I'll try to use it, and it just doesn't work. Now, my understanding is when I, no, not my understanding, but when I tried recording this episode a little bit ago, I tried it again, and it worked. So I don't know, maybe it's a, it's a hit and miss thing for me. I think, honestly, my one player, I've got a whole bunch of other mods, so I'm thinking that it may just be a confliction with another mod. But we're going to go ahead and show you this anyways. It does work, so here we go. The novice spell staffs, what you can, spell staffs, if you're not familiar with them, essentially you craft a spell, then you attach a spell to it, you craft a spell staff, then you attach a spell to it, it lets you cast that spell without using your mana. Instead, the staff has a set number of uses. Once those uses are done, the staff breaks, and you'll have to create a new staff. So here we go, novice spell staff, you'll find that they all have similar crafting recipes. They're all done in the crafting table. They all involve a stick, they all involve some sort of dust and a, and a focus. Now for this one, the novice spell staff, it actually involves a lesser focus and ventium dust. And that creates your novice spell staff. In fact, let's go ahead and grab that out of there because we're going to use it here in a minute. 
All right, then you got the Journeyman Spell Staff, which is a little bit stronger than the Novice Spell Staff. It'll deal, you know, attack dam attack spells will do more damage and stuff. Um, it uses Stick, Vintium Dust, and Focus, and that creates you one Journeyman Spell Staff. Last but not least is the Master Spell Staff. It uses a Greater Focus and Arcane Ash and a Stick. I create your Master Spell Staff. Now, the difference in these. Now, you know when you're casting spells, you have Diminished, Normal, and Augmented. Well, it's the same thing with these staffs. Novice Spell Staff casts in Diminished Mode. Journeyman casts in Standard. And Master Spell Staff casts your spell in Augmented Mode. So now this is definitely a way for you to cast spells in augmented mode without ever finding the 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 Archmage's Tower or the Archmage Podium. Definitely a good thing to keep in mind. You can use the spell staffs. Now here's how you do it. Once you've crafted your spells, go ahead and grab your crafted your spell staffs, grab your spells, go to your crafting bench or even in your, your survival inventory and throw your spell staff in there along with a spell. Now I'm putting a novice spell staff with an arcane beam. Notice it says novice spell staff. It says same thing. It won't say what it does until you pick it up. You pick it up, and there it is. Well, let's move it over here so you can see it. Novice spell staff of arcane beam. It has 300 charges and 300 uses remaining. Because this is, it, it casts it in diminished mode. It only uses one charge per cast. All right. The next one we want to look at is the journeyman spell staff. I'm going to throw dig on this bad boy. All right. Now, this one we have 900 charges, but only 20 uses. So it actually uses more charge per use for that spell. Last but not least is the Master Spell Staff. And we're going to throw some Firebolt on that one. And that gives us 5,000 charges with 27 uses. Now, as you notice, each one of these Spell Staffs do have more charge than the prior. But they also have fewer uses based on the number of charges. Now... So once we've done that, you can take it in hand just like this. Hold your right click button. It pulls it back just like an arrow. Let go, and it should cast a spell. Ah. See, here I go again. Now it's not working. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That one worked. Yeah, see, for me, it's a hit and miss thing. I can't guarantee that it always works. For some reason, I haven't quite figured out why that is yet. Oh, there we go. So this is not one I want to charge. You want to just focus right on it and hit it and let it go. Okay, let me get out of this. I'm going to have to fix that later. Oh, well. All right, next is the Arcane Beam. Now, the Arcane Beam, it's supposed to be casting it as I'm holding it, but obviously it's not doing that. So I don't know. Hold on. Let's, let's try this. Hi, Creeper. Nope. All right. Well, you know, whatever. Charge it up. Boom! Kill them out. All right, so that's how spell stats work. Let's go ahead and dump these out of my inventory now. I don't need them anymore for the rest of this tutorial. Now keep that in mind. The next thing I want to go over is the crystal wrench. Now, if you can read signs, it, it's used for routing power from a source block or from a power source to a, an essence block uh, anything that uses essence now as i've told you in previous episodes in general you have to place your source before the thing that it's going to charge now in this case as you see i've gone ahead and placed this conduit before i place that so, which means these are not linked this conduit is not getting power from that so that's where the crystal wrench comes into play the crystal wrench will allow us to connect it now before i show you how it works let's show you how to make it so that's what it looks like in a crafting table you take three iron ingots one blue orchid, one desert nova, and one ventium dust. Put it just like so in your crafting table. It'll make a crystal wrench. Bada boom. Now, you take the crystal wrench in hand. You right click on your source block, and that puts it into link mode. As you see that nice little beam coming up, that means that this is now in link mode, which means it's waiting on you to right click on something else to link it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to right click here. Now, that is linked. That will now pull power from this nexus. So that's one way if that you can place blocks down. In fact, here we go. You can place blocks down before the nexus. For instance, if you wanted to build your gateways, you could build your gateway before you build the nexus that'll power it. And not and you can link them together that way. 
Now, I want to warn you that if you're linking it with, like, say, if if the block uses dark essence and you link light essence to it, it will erase all the dark essence in that block. Keep that in mind. It will overpower it and it gets rid of it. Okay? So that's what that does. So it's pretty much everything I just showed you is on those signs. The next thing we want to go over is the essence bag. Now the essence bag is one central storage location for you to store all your essences in your inventory as you're moving around. It's not a very big bag. But here, let's go ahead and show you how to, that's what it looks like. Here's how you craft it. You need six pieces of leather, two pieces of wool, any color, and one gold nugget. Do that in your crafting table and you get an essence bag. And as I know, it says also holds rupees. But this is what it looks like. Very 16-bit graphics. But it's got just enough slots to hold all of your essences within it. Now, the essence bag is a valid storage location for regions. So if you have all your essences in that bag and it's in your inventory and you're casting an augmented spell that requires a regent, it will know to look in the bag to pull the regent. Just so you're aware. Now, last but not least, on to this episode, as far as items go, as you see, I've got some things to repair here. The last one I want to go over is the magic wall. Now, in Ars Magica 2, this is the recipe for making a magic wall. You have two Ventium dust outside of stone, and do that in your craft table, you get 16 magic walls. Unfortunately, in this Ars Magica, there is no crafting recipe for making a magic wall. You cannot get the magic wall in survival mode in Ars Magica 1, in this Ars Magica. I'm sorry, you just can't do it. I believe, and I'm, I'm talking from my throat here because I don't know for sure, but I believe that Mythian had an intent for the Magic Wall in Ars Magica 1, but he was never got to it. He was never able to actually put it into the game. I believe that it looked like he was trying to get into making spell crafting altars like he did for Ars Magica 2, but he was never able to get there. I'm not, not sure on that though, but you know, at least the Magic Wall is in Ars Magica 1. You'll see it in your crafting menu. I mean, in your in your uh, creative menu, it is there. It is not obtainable in survival. So, if you want it in your survival mode, I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to cheat to get it. All right, so that's it for the items for this episode. And remember, those will go on the next episode. That'll be the last episode. We'll cover all, cover all those items, um, and I'll probably fix this before then. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and we're going to pick up some spells over here. I'm only going to do one stack of spells this time. I want to leave the last stack for next episode. And that'll finish off our spells and everything in one final episode. So first to spell up the grads is Magma Shield. Now if you are near lava and you cast Magma Shield, it will summon that lava to you. In fact, here, I am in creative. Let's go ahead and let's place some lava down. And let's see what, let's see it work. All right, so we've got some lava down. So we're going to cast the magma spell, magma shield. And here's exactly what it does. You see it pulls fire from the lava to create this little spell or this little shield around you. So that if an enemy comes in, they're going to take, they're going to take damage from the lava. So that's how that works. And it does last for a, a good amount of time, even on diminished mode, which is what I was just casting it in. The next thing is magma ball. Now, as it says, fireball of magma at your target. So... Pull it and toss. Now, this reminds me a lot of dun, 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 Super Mario. Because that's really, it tosses it and it bounces. Boing, boing. As you see, it, 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 it does have a limited bounce. So we're casting on augmented mode. Boing, 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 boing. Lasts for just a little bit longer. But so the, the mode that you cast it in does determine the amount of damage that is there. But this is definitely one you want to be close to your enemy or at least bounce it off. I think let's, I'm pretty sure that you can bounce it off walls too. Let's go try real quick. Boing. So it's a ricochet shot. You can bounce it around a corner or whatever. It does do good damage. All right, sow the seeds. All right, hold on. We, we need something for this particular spell. We need, let's, let's grab some seeds here. And we'll throw the seeds right here for now. 
and we're gonna sow the seeds. That's literally what the spell does, guys. Seriously, did you see that? It just sows the seeds. Let's grab some more. Boom. And it sows a bunch of seeds at once. So it's not... It, it, at first you think, well, it just sows a seed. No, it sows a bunch of seeds at once. So it will make your gardening a lot faster. All right. The more augmented your spell is, the larger the range that it's going to, to sow the seeds in. So there, you, there you have it. So that's really good for large gardens. If you, if you're inclined to have large gardens, you could definitely use sow the seeds to sow them all. Now, reaping skies is just exactly what it says. It once, let's say, hold on. Let's do, 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 do. Uh, ba, ba, bum. Let's make all this grow real quick. Uh, let's, let's do that, and then, and we'll, we'll show you what this does. Do, 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 do. Reaping skies is used for reaping the harvest once it's done. Okay, boom! And just like sow the seeds, it will harvest a large range. So once again, it's it's designed for large gardens to make things a little bit easier for you. I mean, come on, magic! It's magic. It makes everything easier, right? Till the fields. Now, once again, another gardening feature. You can till the fields. Let's go on augmented and bada boom. It's, so it makes gardening a lot easier so that you can do stuff like that. Yeah, we sow the seeds again. Uh, am I out of seeds? No, I'm out of seeds. Okay. All right. Next is Bound Sword. Now, if you find yourself out in the woods and you don't have a sword or your sword breaks. Oh, God. We've all had that happen. Your sword breaks. Cast a spell. You get a sword. You can fight with it. Throw the sword and it gets rid of the spell. It breaks the spell as soon as you as soon as you throw it. With most bound items, as soon as you throw the item to get rid of the item, just throw it. Now you can also switch around just like this, switch from item to item, no big deal. Bound shovel, same deal. Now you can see you can have more than one bound item. Keep that in mind. So you can actually walk around with a bound sword, bound shield. Um, Sorry, bound shield, bound sword, a bound shovel, bound pickaxe, all kinds of stuff. Now, as you see, I do have several bound items here. Um, they would be equivalent to using a diamond item as far as the damage that they do. And they are just a little bit weaker than diamond item. I would normally equate them to gold items, except that they do a little more damage than gold items, but just a little less than diamond items. Durability wise, I'd say they're kind of along the range of gold because gold, you know, it, it doesn't last very long. So you will be casting this repeatedly, but it is a very useful, these are very useful spells, especially when you find yourself out in the forest and you don't have any items with me, with you, or all your items break. This way you can go ahead and continue grabbing stuff as you're going. I especially love having bound pickaxe because, you know, if you guys have seen my Arcania, Arcania episode, I tend to use pickaxes mostly from all my digging. And that's because I don't like running out of mana, you know. it's you know, You're down there using dig to, to, to mine. It, it's, it's inefficient. It uses up a huge amount of mana. So I tend to take pickaxes with me. And as you know, pickaxes break. Now, I don't use diamond pickaxes. I just don't see a reason to. I mean, not the only thing you can get with diamond that you can't get with anything else is obsidian. Um, but I do use iron pickaxes for certain things. Now, when I'm playing Arcania, I don't use iron pickaxes at all. That's because I use dig to pick up the more precious materials like iron and diamonds and stuff. So I'm always carrying around stone pickaxes. And my stone pickaxes are always breaking. And I don't know how many times I've found myself in Arcania down in my mines and my last stone pick breaks. And then I turn around and I see something else. I see a diamond. And the way I am, I like to dig all around the diamond to make sure I've got it all. Well, my pickaxe is broke. So now I'm stuck with using the dig spell. No, not anymore. You can use the bound pickaxe to go ahead and open up the space for you to dig around with that way you can go ahead and break the blocks out using bound pickaxe and get your stuff so there we have it guys that'll be it for this episode i'm going to save the rest for the next episode um let's go ahead and throw these out to get the spells back and toss them back into the chest i want to say that i am really definitely looking forward to starting the ars magica 2 tutorials 
Um, as you probably already know, I do intend on starting those tutorials after Minecon. The week after my, the weekend after Minecon will be when I record the first episode. That first episode is just going to be showing you how to install Ars Magica 2 on a vanilla Minecraft launcher. That's right. You heard me right. You no longer need Magic Launcher. You can use Minecraft Launcher to install Ars Magica 2. All right, so that'll be it for this episode. I want to say thank you for watching, especially all of you who have watched all the way through my series. And I want to thank you all for the excellent comments and the feedback that you guys have given me along the way. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next episode. As always, a like and a share. Let's know that you care and gets us out there.